as I was introduced by our host, uh, I'm psychologist. I have about 15 years of experience being a forensic expert, which means I was asked from uh, judges, prosecutors, investigators to provide some psychological justification for different kind of criminal behavior, including murder, rape, sometimes suicide. Uh, my wife also psychologist. She is the head of personal psychology department at Yerevan State University with about 20 years of experience in research in psychology. Uh, and now we are questioning and we are challenging by two years old lady. Look at her. Uh, every evening we are sitting and trying to analyze her behavior. Actually trying to understand her behavior. Having jointly about 40 years of experience in psychology. Uh, and she is questioning us. What do you think she is doing on this picture? I will tell you. She is fighting. Fighting for her freedom of movement. And here, another fight. She is fighting for her freedom of expression, to be listened to. Here, she is thinking. But neither my wife nor me, we can tell you what about she is thinking. But these two years of amazing experience with her uh, tells me that whatever she is doing, she is doing with a very thorough thinking, going through the very thorough thinking process. Uh, once, when she was 20 months old, that was September last year, we went out, I and she. Uh, we went to the new open parliament garden. We took the scooter, we took the ball, and we went for to, to play, to drive the scooter to play the ball. And she took with her her lovely toy, internationally it's called Dudu. Every kid has its own, her or his own uh, lovely toy. Uh, I was trying to kind of pursue her to leave the toy into the car, but she, she wants to have it with her. Uh, a few minutes and I decided to talk with her as I would do that with a 15, 16, 18 years old uh, person. Sometimes I did that with my students and no result, but anyway. Uh, I explained her in a very serious manner that we can leave Dudu into the car, in the car, and we will be back, the toy will be there, and she will have it when we will back to the car. She looked at me with her wise and big eyes and said, yes, and she left that toy into the car. We went out, we played, I called to my wife and told. I told that our 18 months old, 20 months old lady, girl, went through the six steps out of seven of decision-making processes and made the decision. She identified the need for decision. She gathered the necessary information. She identified alternatives, weighed the evidences, chose the uh, alternative, taken an action, made a decision. I'm not sure about the seventh one, which is the reviewing of decision, but I think she did it uh, without me. So, uh, whatever she is doing, she is doing that in a very, uh, uh, very serious process. And this is something which I 
study psychology some 20 years ago, uh, haven't seen in the textbooks. And unfortunately, sometimes now uh, it's also uh, is not teaching. So uh, the science, mainly coming to us from the Soviet time, is outdated. I'm talking about the science called development psychology, which is related to these ages uh, of, of persona. Uh, we have been taught that personal identity uh, is recognizing by the child closer to third year. Uh, my daughter was one and a half year. She did some paint on the wall on, in our apartment. I asked, who did this? And she said, me. And showed and, and did like this, me. So you will find in a textbook that it should happen in a closer to three years. Uh, the important thing is that I am bringing example on my daughter, but this is about the new generation. Uh, so this is the new generation which challenges the science and us and questioning the science. Uh, this new generation actually creating the science and bringing a number of questions to which we are sometimes being too late to answer. Uh, this new generation, if we do not put them into the box, do not create our relations based on information coming from the past, with the previous theories, we will see that they have their own perception of this world and they are trying to find their own places in this world and they're trying to pursue us that they are independent human beings who can take an action and make a decision. Uh, if we can create possibilities and opportunities since the first day of life, which will provide freedom of movement, which will provide freedom of choice, freedom to make a decision, then in the end, we will have free member of society, which will take responsibility, not, which will take an action not only for the decision, but also for, uh, but will take also responsibilities for, for that, um, for that uh, actions. The problem here is that in societies like ours, which is in a process uh, to become open one, uh, we face and we sometimes are arguing, even I, with my friends, who has much more experience in um, being a parent, uh, arguing with why we should change traditions. How do we know that your new approach uh, will affect uh, positively than the traditions which we have, which we received from our parents, and, and they have received from their parents, and that's kind of tested through the, uh, I don't know, 50, 60, 100 years. But the theory, which called self-determination theory, introduced by US-based psychologists in the end of 90s and beginning of 2000, um, Edward Dennis and Richard Ryan uh, told that the important part of personal development is an activity process which they, the person, create by themselves and passed by themselves. So, just an example, when our kids are playing with Lego, and you know, there is a clear instruction with the photos of Lego how to do and what to do, 
and they are doing something different, we're trying to say, no, 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 let's do this one. Let's put this color into that color. And she, my daughter, she always refused that. She said, no. So she wanna, she wanna have her own way. She create her own activities and want to go through that activity. And here is a problem with, um, from one side is traditional approach, from which has its own justification coming from the hundred years of history. And from other side is a new approach which should be based on respect of freedoms and rights of the person. Uh, how we should deal with this. Of course, that's again the choice of uh, everyone. But uh, I believe personally into the science. And uh, I think that if we should choose, or if we have a chance uh, to make a decision, how should uh, we create our relation with our kids, with our children, based on traditions or based on respect to rights and freedom? Uh, I personally trying to choose the second one. Uh, if we think, as a conclusion story for the future, if we think we want to have free, open, prosperous, and dignified society, uh, we should have that principles for our relations with our children. Looking, looking at the picture, how is she thinking, I can say that whatever is she doing is not a caprice. She is not capricious. She is not women. The reaction which she provides, it's not an uh, impulsive thing. That's whatever she is doing. Looking at this picture, I cannot believe that uh, she can do that without any uh, uh, thoughtful thinking process. So I am thinking that that's her uh, freedom of choice and she tried to explain that choice to me, and the problem actually is that I am not understanding that. Uh, so from that point of view, I have to respect her freedom, her rights, and her uh, choice. Thank you. <laughs>